Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. I am your very special host, DJ Christmas, and I have with me my very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself to everybody out there? Well, thank you, Chris. I certainly would. Uh, my name is Susan Silo, and um, I've been uh, an actress and a voiceover actress for a number of years and uh, just absolutely love it. I'm originally from New York, and now I live in California in La La Land, you know, the land of fruits and nuts, and and uh, I just adore the work that we do, and um, I'm having a, a very good time being on your show. I'm delighted that you asked me. Well, we're delighted that you could take the time out to come and have a nice chat with us. <laughs> well, what's been happening? What um, What are you interested in first? The stuff that I uh, did in my early life and career? Uh, I started uh, in television. I was an on-camera actress. Um, and my very first show was the Jack Benny show years and years and years ago. And um, I was on Route 66 and Dobie Gillis and The Man from UNCLE and Gunsmoke and Bonanza. I mean, you name it, I was there. That used to be kind of like a repertory theater for we young people in those wonderful golden days where we would go from one show to the next. And it was very exciting. I got my start uh, on Broadway, actually. I was in the original West Side Story. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I was... Uh, Rosalia, the girl that sang Puerto Rico, you lovely island. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It really was. And I was uh, really barely into my teens. And there I was, a little baby on Broadway, a true Broadway babe. Well, there you go. And that's usually one of the common stories we hear from a lot of voice actors that they, they got their start in theater. Not as many of them get as you know big as Broadway, but that's definitely very... Very cool that you got the chance to go out and do something like that. Yeah, it was a very special. I was born in a trunk. I don't know if you know that expression, but <laughs> I came from an acting family. And my father was a Broadway actor and then a television actor. My mother was an actress and then uh, stopped and went into production uh, at MGM for many, many years. And so, you know, I didn't come off the turnip truck. I mean, I was, like, born into the business. I didn't even know there was anything else. Like, anybody who has a family business, that was our family business. Exactly. You know, and, and it was just, it was great. And when did you start making the switch from on-camera stuff and stage work into the voiceover business? Well, you know, that was kind of like a gradual change people had said to me you know you have a really unusual voice and at that time i was doing um a lot of on-camera commercials uh big ones you know like kellogg's and hunt snack snack pack i did that for three years and then um gravy train and when sometimes you're not on camera and you're doing the commercial lines you know selling the product um you're doing a voiceover and people said, oh, you know, when you're not on camera, you're very distinctive in, you know, your sound. And so little by little, the agents just said, you know, I was already there, which was a very, very wonderful thing because it was a pretty cliquey kind of part of the business that not everyone could get into. And I kind of segued rather than having to, you know, get started in it. I was kind of like thrown into it. And just learned as I went. It was typical, typical OJT, you know, on-the-job training. And um, I learned a lot from the wonderful people in um, voiceover. I, I started out in the beginnings at Hanna-Barbera, uh, and that was so exciting. You know, that was, the, that was the era of the original Smurfs. I know there's a movie out there today, but we were the originals. And I was Petaluma on the Smurfs. And uh, I did Pac-Man there, and uh, oh, hey, it's the King. A lot of, a lot of the old shows, and it was marvelous working at Hanna Barbera because that was kind of magical. Hanna Barbera ranks, you know, with Disney and Marvel and Ruby Spears and Deke and Film Roman. I mean, they, you know, those were really just uh, stalwart companies that that had a magic about them. I think Nickelodeon has that that magic now too. You know, we. Uh, I mean, you come into the place where you work, and it's like coming into, you know, a kid's playground. And that's the way we feel about our work. We know it's work, and we're very responsible, but we have an awfully good time, Chris. Definitely, and you really get to feel that in the quality of the work that comes out. I, A lot of 
old Hanna Barbera stuff was before my time, but I I had the chance to see it when uh, Boomerang was the big thing on TV, and they were right rolling back all the classic stuff, and a lot of it is really really good for its time. Well, I'm so yeah, thank you because you know I mean it's kind of like an ouch when you say I wasn't old enough. We know that, but I tell you, I am so grateful for the longevity and for people bringing things back, you know, the retro stuff and appreciating the work that was done and the work that, you know, continued to be done. But uh, we people who were back there then um, are so thrilled at the resurgence of interest in what we're doing, um, that what we did then and what we're doing now, and it's also so terrific to be able to still be here. Definitely, and... Sometimes you get to see even a more boost in popularity for the older stuff with all the remakes. Like you mentioned, the new Smurfs movie that's out probably spurred some interest in the older series as well. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And we did some really uh, wonderful shows. Uh, some of the shows that you mentioned, some of the people that I worked with, uh, Jennifer Hale and, and uh, Tara Strong, uh, I was in Shaolin Showdown with them, and. Um, the Juniper Lee show, uh, the life and times of Juniper Lee, um, some really wonderful shows. I did. I was Mama Moskowitz in Five uh, Five Old American Tales, and yes. Dom DeLuise was on that show. Yeah, a lot of really. And Dan Castellaneta. A lot of really big, well-known people that you get the chance to work with because you're such a well-known person yourself. Oh, Chris, that's sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I think we all feed off of each other. I mean, I remember Dom, rest his soul, what a, what a talent he was. Uh, we, could, we could barely do our lines when he was in the room. I mean, that man was just so off-the-cuff, crazy, funny, uh, wonderful, and so loved the work. And that's what, you know, I teach, too. And, and that's what I tell my students, that... Hey, guys, what it's about is the work. It's just all about the work and have fun and enjoy and go for it and, you know, free yourself up because here we are getting, you know, paid so wonderfully to do something that is like, you know, dressing up and carrying on and making fools of yourself. I mean, how many people can say they do that for a living? Exactly. And <laughs> one of the other things uh, since you've been a uh, able to stay a part of the industry is so long as I bet you've seen a lot of changes to the technology and methods that go oh. into it. Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, we I go back to the time of razor blades. Uh, and, you know, that takes a lot longer to cut, to snip, to slice and dice. Today, they just, why? It's barely touching a button. You know, yeah. it's amazing. It has saved so much time, and also it does some marvelous things to get what they want in sound. You know, it's much – you don't have to worry about certain things. They can correct certain things, and that does help us. I mean, I'm no engineer. I don't profess to be an engineer, although – Speaking of that, you know, now we're, <laughs> we're, you know, recording at home in our bunny slippers, for gosh sakes, for our auditions, um, because that's, you know, the technology is so advanced that we have our, all have our home studios, and that's what we do. And I, I tell you, it's wonderful. I think there's an upside to that, Chris, but... I sometimes really miss mixing it up with my fellow actors at the studios, uh, you know, when we went to audition. Sessions, of course, we go into state-of-the-art studios. Uh, some people do record from home. They have state-of-the-art at home. But I prefer to be in a studio and let the engineers do their engineering. I just want to be the talent and, you know, act because that's what yeah. I have to do. And from my standpoint, it seems like that would be a lot more fun, getting the chance to go into a studio and – interact with all the other cast members. Absolutely. And, P.S., I like an audience, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Hamming up for an actual crowd instead of just a, a microphone. Exactly. I think that probably a lot of us that came from theater missed that because theater is a very, very exciting medium uh, because it's instant gratification for the actor. You know, you get the laughing, you get the crying, you get the clapping, you know, you get the sighs, you get the breathing. It's a living, breathing thing. Um, the other way, it's, you know, kind of like into a vacuum. But, you know, when we do go to the studio, at least, you know, we can we can hear people laugh after a take, of course. But you know what I'm saying. They're, and you can see people's faces. You can see the joy in people's faces. Here I have to just kind of make it up in my head that everybody's loving me, you know. 
<laughs> Which they do, but you know, you still oh, have to you. imagine it when you can't see it. That's right. You know, I miss that. I certainly, I certainly do miss it. And, and I uh, ha- yes, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity of working with, you know, so many uh, wonderful directors and people. Gordon Hunt, uh, you know, comes to mind, um, Jeannie McSwain, Sue Blue. Um, uh, these people are absolute masters at, you know, what they do. And when you get to work with people that you know, they're able to push your buttons. It's like they can, you know, just say, oh, no, do that number six thing that you do. No, how about two on that one, you know? And it's like they know, they just know how to get it out of you, and it's such a joy to work that way. Uh, the opportunity in voiceover that we do have is that we get to get repeats with different the same directors, you know, each each one having their different style. But... We just like do a series with them for you know a couple of years, and what a you know what a wonderful opportunity that is. You become you become like theater. You become like a family. Right, and we definitely hear that more and more, uh, not just with the cartoon world where it seems like the recording sessions for that are more big groups where the whole cast for a specific episode is in the same room together playing off each other, but in anime recording as well where they usually go in one at a time but they all know each other and they're all really good friends with each other it's a very close-knit group in both situations yes i I definitely i i totally agree with you and and i think that we're all very grateful for that um and i think that uh the industry um you know sees its strength in that i think that uh the agents uh i've been with gosh been with my agents forever uh and i love them and you know, they promote that, too. They promote all of us being together and making it, uh, you know, kind of a, a group effort. Because that's what it is, you know, ensemble work. You're, you know, you're only as good as the group, too, because nobody plays star, you know. And I remember that from the Mary Tyler Moore show, that um, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore, all the actors said what made it so great was that we were doing ensemble work. No one was the star. It didn't matter whose name came first. That wasn't the point. The point was when we do the work, we're a team, and that's what makes a strong show. Definitely, and it, like I said earlier, it really does show in the, the final product with the, the sense of quality. Yeah, yeah, there is a, there is a very, very strong sense of quality. And, uh, I've loved the on camera. Uh, I certainly, I love the voiceover because I can do so many roles that obviously I don't physically look like the role. So that's really exciting. Uh, I think uh, all of my fellow actors will agree with that. You know, I, I, I can go from an infant to an ancient soothsayer in one day. And, you know, you can't do that on camera. On camera, you got to, you know, sit in the, whatever costume it is you're wearing, whatever makeup, and that's it. That's all she wrote on that one. So it's very right. exciting to be able to do that. You know, I've done so, so many different uh, crazy things. I even played guys. I mean, I was Dr. Carbuncle on uh, Biker Mice from Mars. Right, and the guys is... were laughing about it. They said, you know, at auditions, the guys would say, uh-oh, Silo's in the room. She might get this one. She usually <laughs> gets the guys. <laughs> yeah. You see that a lot with uh, especially a lot of uh, female voice actors who go for young boys. As mm. For example, uh, people like Tara Strong and Debbie Derryberry, they usually get that young male role. Yes, oh yes, they do the young boys very well. Well, you know, there's a thing about uh, they do use children sometimes, but uh, there are rules, you know, there are laws that the children can only work a certain amount of time. They have to have a social worker and their pa- a parent or a guardian there. And uh, that can sometimes, you know, be a lot. And, and these girls are absolutely fabulous. And in my younger days, I've, I've played uh, boys too, and it was just absolutely so fun um and the, and sometimes with a young actor a very very young actor uh they can't get some of the emotions that they want and they can get it from you know a person who's a little bit more mature but they still use young actors i mean i started when i was four Definitely. i was um you know yeah i was you know singing and um i had a, a hit record when i was uh 12 13 dear diary and i was on the uh 
American Bandstand, Dick Clark, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, that was a part of my career, too. Singing was a big part of my career. And uh, I was, you know, very young doing that stuff. But these girls who, you know, who, who do this, the young boys now are absolutely marvelous. They have a, a real talent for that. And I love it. I'm, you know, I just play about anything right now. I, you know, weird things. And speaking of that, I've, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've played, you know, demons and, you know, all that kind of stuff in, in games, you know, all those video games. A lot of zombies. I've been, uh, I've been really, really known for my zombie stuff. It's well, I know really that a... Zombies are all the rage these days for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, those vampires and those zombies. Boy, they really. They just they go for that and and uh, when did I do the Dead Rising and uh, I think one thing called zombies the Undead Knights I mean some really wild stuff and it's it's very exciting as a matter of fact I just worked with uh, Gordon Hunt on some zombie thing uh, forgive me I can't remember the name of it now but I think it had zombie in the title. And uh, Gordon and I, when I was doing, you know, the Smurf-like things and the cutesy things, you know, had never seen me do this kind of ugly, wild, crazy voice stuff. And he was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Susan's standing in front of me doing this. It's a really big <laughs> change really of pace. Great. Huh? It's a really big change of pace for someone who's uh, not yeah, used to it. Yes. It's a very huge change of pace, but uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to see the look on their faces when they, you know, they realize, well, you know, you grow. That's another thing. I, I have really grown um, in, the, in the voiceover field. There are things that I'm doing now that I never in a million years thought I could do. And part of it is li- listening and, and hearing what other people do. You know, really when you're on uh, a show and you see all the other talent and you just listen to what they're doing and then you try it on your own and then you you know you start to expand i mean you can always grow as a performer i'm i'm always so happy and amazed and i love to pass that on to students or anyone who is interested in acting voiceover acting um that there's so much room to grow. It never just stops and that's all you do. You have plenty of opportunities to um, open yourself up to new and exciting uh, sounds and roles. You really, really do. And that exploration is exciting. Every time I get a script, I'm never bored. I am never bored by it. You know, what can I bring to it? What, you know, what can be exciting that they haven't heard? You know, I don't want to do something that everybody's going to do. I want to do something that's a little, you know, off the wall. And I go, who did that? Who did that? And I always say, you may not get the role that you're going up for, but if you do something interesting, if you leave a wonderful calling card, a vocal call- calling card uh, for these people, and you've done your homework, they'll remember you. They'll remember you, and they'll call you. You never know when. Could be months, could be a year, but they'll call you for something else. Definitely. And we've talked a, a lot about a lot of broad stuff, but I was wondering if we could uh, touch upon some of your more specific roles, specifically uh, some big fan favorites out there that I know a lot of people are looking forward to hearing about. Uh, the roles in um, in animation or on camera, which roles would you like to talk about? Uh, mostly uh, animation, if you don't mind. Nope, no problem. Um, I remember I did uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I played Fang in that. And I mentioned my biker mice from Mars and um, Channel Umpty 3, uh, directed by Mark Evanier. I played Polly and Assorted Voices on that. And Mark Evanier is a marvelous man, I, I, um, a, a director and a talent and a writer. My gosh, and I've done Comic-Con with him. And um, he does Garfield. Garfield is his. Um, and... Uh, Darkwing Duck, I was Neptunia on that. El Tigre, oh, that was The Adventures of Manny Rivera. I was Sartana, Queen of the Dead. I loved doing that. That was just such a great show, and it was wonderful because it had that, you know, um, Latin flair to it, and the, and the characters were so interesting and off the wall. That was done at Nickelodeon. And I mentioned uh, Mama Mousekowitz. I did, my God, years ago, a thing called The Inhumanoids. I was Miss Sandra Shore. 
And then, oh, James Bond Jr. I was Ms. Fortune. And I believe I was a young girl in that, too. Phoebe. Oh, yes, I was Phoebe. Uh-huh. I remember Phoebe. Uh, oh, and we did Jokers, The Adventures of Piggly Winks. I was the goat. This was an Irish, English, Australian production. And I was uh, Miss Nanny, the goat. I had a lot of fun with those people. That was a, an exciting show because we, you know, we had different countries on that one. Yeah, and then, that's always uh-huh. fun, that sort of thing, uh, Jakers and El Tigre, getting the chance to do an accent that you're not normally used to doing. Well, you know, I was very lucky because I grew up doing accents uh, for – um, the theater and for um, the shows that I did on camera for television, like in Bonanza, I was uh, Latina and uh, I was French in uh, combat and I speak French and I speak uh, Spanish and I speak uh, some Italian. So I I love accents. That's that's part of the package of Susan, you know that. Uh, Hey, you know, if you, if you want the accents, I'm I'm there for you. And ones that I don't know, I study, and I will give it to you. You know, um, in um, Shaolin Showdown, of course, she was I was Wu Ya, and that Wuya and, and was always a big favorite of mine. It was a very powerful character. Thank you, thank you very much. I enjoyed Wu Ya, and, and she I don't know where she really uh, came from the ether. Uh, out of nowhere for me. I just kind of felt her. And, uh, you know, she was also a beautiful woman. You know, she was two characters. She was Wuya, the floaty, that floaty, nefarious kind of thing. And then she was a beautiful woman. I loved playing off of that, playing, uh, you know, both of them. And um, the old Garfield show, I was Nefer Kitty, and uh, Beautiful Woman and Witch. Uh, I was a bunch of things on that show. Loved working that show. Um... There was also the old days of Pac-Man. I was Sue. Years and years ago, my gosh, that was so fun. A couple of my fans sent me some clips of uh, of Pac-Man, and it's amazing to see the old, uh, you know, the old clips of that. It's just uh, it was good stuff. It was very, very cute stuff. And um, let's see, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Darkwing Duck, I mentioned, and um, James Bond Jr. Kid Video, Kid Video. There was a, a wild show. I played She Lion on that one. Um, very, very interesting show. I have, by the way, I have the cells. Years ago, they used to give us all the the cells. Now they know what you know they're worth, and we don't get them like we used to. It would have <laughs> been, <laughs> it would have been fun if I could have the cells of uh, of everything. You know that would be uh, that would be really exciting, but um, there you know it's a it's a wonderful wonderful field. I mean, um, until they moved uh, some of the shows to Canada, I was um, the White Queen on uh, Pride of the X Men. That was a lovely show too. And that you know I I play villainesses. I love to play villainesses. They're just uh, you know they're challenging. And a lot of fun, and I really enjoy doing that show. So that's a you know the video games, of course. I uh, Clive Barker's Jericho and um, Crash Tag Team Racing, Crash Twin Sanity, Dead Rising, Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist, Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. I played Kazonu, this kind of gypsy woman. And uh, Giant Citizen Kabuto, I was Queen Sappho. And Quest for Glory, uh, Shadows of Darkness, Tales of Symphonia. Plenty of great stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff, Chris. A lot of good stuff. It's, you know, I'm, I, they come trippingly off the tongue sometimes. It's hard to remember all of them, and I love it when I'm at a comic con or any of the seminars where the fans get a chance to do a little Q&A, and someone will, you know, tell me I did something, and I'll go, did I do that? I don't remember doing that. <laughs> they know more than I do. You know the fans? God bless them. They know more than I do. They have more uh, uh, memorabilia than I do. It's just amazing, because all I was, you know, I was a journeyman actor. I just went to work, and I didn't, I didn't get all my stuff. I didn't pick up all my pictures, and I, but... My fans, those loyal fans, they sure did, and they surprise me all the time. 
So we're very lucky in the in the industry. We have we have ourselves as a family, but we have a whole family of of fans out there that really uh, pay attention to us, support us, and I just I just would like the airwaves, you know, to carry that to the fans and let them know that uh, we're very grateful for that. We really are. Definitely, and that's. You know, a good reaction that we hear a lot. A lot of people really enjoy the fans and getting the chance to see them at conventions and everything. Oh, absolutely. And and I'm usually there, uh, but unfortunately I can't be there all the time. I'm working, and I also do some traveling uh, on on my own, doing my own stuff. I'm also um, in the uh, beauty industry through um, my my husband and... I do promotion of new uh, products. I've done uh, platform work for beauty shows and voiceover for beauty products. So I'm really all over the place. And one of the um, shows that is coming up, the Hollywood show that I was going to do and had every intention of doing, I was committed to another uh, uh, beauty uh, job in uh in europe and another gig and i and they extended the run for what i had to do and i had to say no to the wonderful hollywood show but i will be uh doing the um comic-con in los angeles and that's going to be coming up i believe september 24th and 5th uh, and that will be at the la convention center and then they're flying us out to New Jersey for a Batman reunion. Uh, I don't know if you recall that I was the Riddler's girlfriend, Mousy, in the original Batman series. This obviously oh, yes. is on camera. Definitely. Yeah, so we're having this huge reunion uh, for those of us who are still here. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm real sad that Frank can't be here because he'd be a hoot to do this thing with. We, we were close friends and had a really, really good time working together on Empire, uh, which was a television show, and, uh, and of course, on uh, the Batman series. And so we're going to do a weekend show uh, in New Jersey at the Lowe's Landmark Theater, and I believe that is November 12th and 13th. So anybody who's listening and wants to go see that, please come join us. We'd love to see you and say hi. Definitely, but I do believe on that note we're going to take a very quick musical break, but don't go anywhere because we'll still have our special guest when we return, so keep it tuned to your favorite station, 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. Oh, golly, I'm bored. Have you considered listening to some music, Mr. Ooze, sir? It's time to pay the piper. As fun as destroying the command center may be, sir, might I suggest 918 The Fan? Lots of amusing teen DJs and the like. He, a teenager with a big mouth. Not much has changed in 6,000 years. I believe, sir, that they also have a number of celebrity guests from the anime field in for interviews. Woo! Where's my autograph book? That's the spirit, sir. 918TheFan.com As the kids say, check it out. Hey, everybody, welcome back to 91.8 The Fan. I'm still here, and I still have my very special guest. Would you like to give us a sign of life? Because we do have that often unfortunate disconnect. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if you saw the latest movie that I did, Chris. Um, I'm not sure. I would have to well, know the is, name. It's not a test. <laughs> oh, I can tell you what it is. I'm not uh, very it was the uh, Anthony, Hop Anthony Hopkins movie, The Right. Pretty scary movie, I have to say, because I did The Exorcist. I did voices for The Exorcist, too. And uh, Anthony Hopkins happens to be one of my favorite, favorite actors. I think he's brilliant. And um, this was just a, a fabulous movie. I think he, he did it just beautifully. And... Um, I played the demon voice in the pregnant Italian girl. And it was, let me tell you, when they put it together, I thought that, I mean, the director and the, and the sound people, the sound director, wow, it was absolutely great. And um, it, it was uh, top, number uh, one box office for a number of weeks. So I was pretty proud of that. That was like a nice coup, you know. 
uh, to have. And then also, um, I do a lot of uh, commercial work too, voiceover commercials. And uh, I was fortunate enough for two years to be the voice of Rite Aid Drugstores, the new wellness awareness plan. Ah, yes. And Yeah, that was a nice gig, a very, very nice gig and lovely people uh, to work for. And, you know, um, commercials are very much a part of our voiceover world, too. Um, I know that the other is certainly much more fun and giggly uh, to play with, but, you know, hey, commercials are really pretty wonderful. Uh, And we in the voiceover industry, if we can make the crossover, you know, back and forth of doing this fabulous animation work and do commercial That's really exciting. But um, the new stuff that's coming up now, oh, we were talking about Garfield. And uh, it looks like I will be working on that when I get back from Europe, the new Garfield and Friends show, which I'm very, very excited about and to work again with that marvelous man, Mark Evanier, and the fabulous cast. And so that's exciting for me to look forward to when I get back from my beauty gig in uh, in Europe. And then um, also when I get back, uh, there's the Batman reunion in New Jersey. I will repeat uh, again, we're at the uh, landmark, the Lowe's Landmark Theater in Jersey City, I believe it is. And that is November 12th and 13th. So if anybody is around for that, terrific. And then the L.A. Comic-Con is uh, here, obviously, in Los Angeles, September 24th and 25th. And also, I unfortunately am not going to be there. They asked me to be there, but there's also a Hollywood show that is the theme of uh, the Batman. And uh, as I said, unfortunately, I won't be able to make that this year, and I think it was um, October 1st and, no, it's uh, October 8th and 9th, and that would be at the Marriott in Burbank, in case uh, anyone is going to visit uh, L.A., they might want to go to that, and there'll be lots of actors there for people to say hi to, and um, my fellow actor said that Mousy will be missed, and I said, well, Mousy will salute you from Europe because <laughs> she won't be back for that. And that's, you know, kind of where it's at at this point. Uh, I, I, As you had uh, talked to me before earlier uh, uh, off air, that there are certain projects that I'm up for, but I'm not at liberty to say. And uh Believe me, it keeps me busy because one thing about an actor, we're always auditioning. Definitely. That's a, that's a constant. As a matter of fact, I recorded today for a project. And, you know, we just see what happens. You just record and, you know, hope for the best. And then, you know, I am very busy with uh, uh, my lecture work and my uh, my teaching which uh, I feel very proud about. I've had some really wonderful students that have sat with me on sessions when they so-called graduated. That makes me very proud. And I uh, also uh, produce and direct uh, demo CDs, you know, for people starting out and for people who are in the uh, industry but have not really worked in voiceover and they would like to get in. Who can blame them, right, Chris? Definitely. Who can blame them? You're sort of a a jack-of-all-trades in the industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what you have to be. I mean, I came from that kind of thinking um, years ago when you were trained in New York. Oh, I I went to the High School of Performing Arts, the original, fame. Yep. And many, many, many good alumni came there. And what we did was we sang, we danced, we acted, we did, we played musical instruments. We rode horse, you know, we did whatever, whatever, so that we could be, a, you know, a well-seasoned performer. And if anyone asked us, you know, what could we, could we do that? We went, yes, and then we went and we studied it. <laughs> you know, there's the old joke about the, the producer saying to the actor, well, how tall are you? And the actor answers, how tall do you want me to be? <laughs> it's sort of, can you do this? I can tomorrow. Right. 
so that's really, you know, that's that's kind of uh, summing it up in a, in a nutshell. I'm, it, it's been delightful uh, talking to you, Chris, and I hope that the listeners had as much fun as we did. Well, we have certainly had a lot of fun, but I am afraid that we are nearing the end of our time together, as sad as it may be. Well, it may be sad, but you know what? It has been fun, and I uh, so appreciate you having me on your wonderful show, and uh, thank you to you and your listeners, and uh, maybe someday we will talk again. Definitely, but before we let you go, we do have one final thing to ask of you. Yes. Uh, We ask everyone who comes on the show if they would be willing to participate in the 91.8 The Fan tradition. And what is that? It's it's nothing dangerous, don't worry. We just asked everybody to do a radio bump for us. A radio what? A radio bump. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just ask you to say, hello, my name is, you insert your name, I do this. You can be as vague or specific as you like, a certain role, just an actor in general. Uh, however you want to have fun with that is completely up to you. And then the most important part is, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Into ninety one point eight the fan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when do you want me to do that? Uh, the only other catch is that we do it live on air in case there are any bloopers. Okay, you do it live on air. Yep. So okay. uh, whenever you, whenever you're ready, we can go for a take one. Okay. Hi, my name is Susan Silo, and I'm a voiceover actor in Los Angeles. And I'm also known as Mousy, the Riddler's girlfriend in Batman. I've done uh, a lot of animation. I absolutely love it. I was um, Wuya on Shaolin Showdown. And uh, it's been wonderful being on this show. And don't forget, listeners, you are tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Awesome. You got it all in one take. It's almost like you've been doing this for... Your whole life. Just a, just a little bit. Just, just a little, little bit. bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> but well, it certainly has been fun, Chris. Thank you. Definitely. This has been a lot of fun. And for anybody out there who missed any part of this interview, shame on you. You missed a great interview. But don't fret because it will be up on our website in the next few days. So make sure that you keep it tuned to your favorite station, 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.